Our first speaker hails from Pauling, New York, where she got her first taste of stage life at the young age of 10. By the age of 16, she had already performed in two off-Broadway shows. Her love for theater brought her to Rhode Island in 2004, where she attended the University of Rhode Island and majored in acting. When she's not on stage or screen, you can find her with her fiance, Matt Baressa, I know Matt's in the audience tonight, right up the road at the 401 studio on Main Street. Tonight, she'll be presenting her ideas on everyday acting. Please welcome Ms. Alyssa Balasari. By a show of hands, how many of you in this room would say that you have acting experience? As you look around, you'll see that not everybody raised their hand. But I'm here to explain why I believe everybody is an actor. I took a class in New York City called One Thought, One Action, led by director Gia Foragus. And one thing Gia said that really stuck with me was this. Thoughts are always connected to verbs, and verbs are always connected to actions. So she proposes that actions are always connected to a physical, gestural expression. So in other words, we think, we move, and we show emotion through the body. Now the idea of this class was to give actors the tools they need to act less like actors and more like everyday people. So this got me thinking. If actors are spending all of this time trying to be like everyday people, then aren't everyday people always acting? I mean, we all think, we all move, and we all feel. So are we all actors? Turns out I have a few points to justify my belief. Most five-year-olds have never made themselves breakfast before, but they've been exposed to the process long enough to understand how to pretend to make you delicious pancakes, and you, in turn, pretend to eat those delicious pancakes. Better yet, have you ever said no to a two-year-old? I made the mistake of telling a two-year-old he couldn't have his ice cream before bed, and I got a pouting lip, stomping feet, tears in the eyes, and uh, clenched fists. Thought leads to action, leads to emotion. Without a word, you are certain that two-year-old is pissed. <laughs> How about teenagers? These are hormone-fueled crazy people. I mean, they spend countless hours imagining what their first kiss is going to be like. And even though they've never shoved their tongue in someone else's mouth before, they know there's a ritual they must perform. Flirting. Lean in, pull away, bat your eyes, avoid eye contact. All of these are physical cues that indicate how you feel about somebody. Then we get a little bit older. Maybe we get to go to college. College kids have the chance to wipe the slate completely clean, reinvent themselves entirely, maybe a new wardrobe. Maybe this means telling stories about their past that never actually happened. I have news for you. This is exactly what actors do, okay? They put on costumes and they live in a world that is not their own. And they take you all as the audience members along for the ride. And then we move into adulthood. Adults, we use comedy and drama in our daily lives to obtain a goal. Whether that goal is to convince a manager you're the right person for the job, or perhaps it's to cover up your shortcomings. We wear masks, and we put them on at different moments throughout our day. For example, the way I'm presenting myself to you all right now is vastly different from how I present myself to my customers. Or the way I carry myself with my fiance, very different from how I carry myself with my sister. Think about it. Do you guys act the same way around your boss as you do around children? Probably not. We visualize to prepare ourselves. We imagine for the sake of understanding things we have not personally experienced. And in doing this, we not only learn about ourselves, but we learn about the world around us. So I'm gonna ask you guys again. By a show of hands, how many of you in this room would say you have acting experience? <laughs> Quite a few more of you. So, my last thought. With this information in hand, if it's true that thoughts 
thoughts are really connected to physical action and expression. Just think about the good we could do in this world. Could we collectively change our thought process and therefore our actions and create a more well-rounded world? This is your chance. It's your chance to be the protagonist. It's your chance to be the hero in your very own story. So I want you to think, is it possible to tell your story in a way that makes other people smile? If we could just remember to think before we react to others, could we avoid unnecessary conflict? Ultimately, what I want you to take away from this, can we create a more tolerant world by just thinking about being accepting? I don't know, I don't have the answer. You tell me. I would love to see your thoughts. Thank you. <laughs>